Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. One of the hints that I give people uh, in terms of creating PowerPoint presentations uh, has been used by a few, and that is setting a blue background and using yellow text on top of that. That provides the best legibility from across the room, specifically related to things like PowerPoint or just general presentations. So Lynn, who happens to be uh, quite a frequent member of the live.perillo.com community, it's been increasingly helpful to my daily workflow, uh, had uh, sent me uh, a list of ideas and thoughts in terms of website readability for the visually impaired. I thought this was very, very useful, especially if you build websites or if you've ever looked at a website and never really figured out why you couldn't read what was on there. People who are visually challenged have even greater problems. She says, friends are always asking me to look at their website and tell them if I like it. What about the colors, the images? How about the spelling, the grammar, the placement of everything? The one thing they seldom ask is, how easy is my site to read? Many people who use a PC to some degree are visually impaired. They are either nearsighted, have astigmatism, like me, or any number of other vision problems that can make reading web pages difficult, annoying, or next to impossible. I often get the feeling the designers are way more interested in impressing people with their cleverness, their technical abilities, and their aesthetic sensibilities than making a site user-friendly. I'm constantly surprised when I go to huge websites run by giant companies, even worldwide corporations, to find their websites are virtually unreadable or give me such terrible eye strain, I lose interest and go elsewhere. Often these websites want to sell me something. How anxious do they think I will be to give them my money? if they don't even have the courtesy and good sense to make their site easy to read and easy to navigate through. How much time am I going to spend trying to find the link I need to click to see product details or to pay for something? I'm usually not in the mood to be playing Where's Waldo when I'm shopping online. Unless, of course, she, she's shopping for a Where's Waldo book, but I don't think that's her point. Why do so many sites insist on using a font size that would be more appropriate for writing the great American novel on the head of a pen? I see this on very small personal websites where they have only a small amount of text on each page, so they certainly aren't cramped for space. I see the same on large business websites, I guess just because they want to cram as much information onto each page as possible, but what good is that if everything is so small, half the people who go there cannot easily read or navigate through the site. When I arrive at a website, I also want to be greeted by font styles where all the letters and numbers are clear as to what they are, without me having to take time to decipher the characters. I don't want an S that could maybe be a 5, or a 5 that could maybe be an S, or an R that looks nothing like any R I've ever seen before. I like artistic and unique font styles, but not if they're puzzling and somewhat illegible. Another problem is the combination of colors and images designers use behind the text, other than R often the background obliterates the text or makes it at least somewhat difficult to read. Again, do you want it pretty and artistic, or do you want it readable? Pretty is nice, but readable is most important, in my opinion. A designer who can accomplish both is a good designer. Another readability problem is lines of text that are too close together. Many people have trouble keeping their eyes on one line of text if it's too close to the line above and or the line below it. When I read a book, a magazine, or a newspaper, I need to place a 3x5 card or a ruler horizontally below the line of the text I'm reading. There's no easy way to do that on a web page. You're viewing in a vertical upright monitor. Bottom line. People of all ages have vision problems, and even though the internet is considered a young person's medium, all those young users who currently have 2020 vision are aging along with the rest of us. At some point, their vision will no longer be 2020 either, and the farther we travel in this technological age, the more visually impaired users there will be. I have a brother who is six years younger than me. He was born with 2020 vision. He teased me mercilessly about my blindness all my life until he turned 50 and had to give in and get his first pair of prescription glasses. Funny thing about that, he teases me no more. Well, I think Lynn is right, and more than anything in dealing with web page design, bad web page design, is slapping the webmaster who still doesn't get the whole concept of having a background image that doesn't obliterate the text. That is the most annoying thing. Now, Lynn, the good news is, um, in, in modern browsers uh, or newer versions of like Firefox and Internet Explorer, you should be easy, easily able to bump up the entire 
page and view it at 110, 120% its original size without necessarily asking the webmaster to play along. That takes care of your font issues. Uh, as far as the background images and even to a certain degree fonts, you might think about installing bookmarklets or favelets as they're called uh, for Internet Explorer. And bookmarklets are these JavaScript, um, well, I, code things, bookmarks, that you can put in either your uh, favorites in Internet Explorer or your bookmarks inside of Firefox. And there are a variety of bookmarklets that will allow you to change the page design on the fly. It, uh, there's one JavaScript bookmarklet that will strip out background images. There's a JavaScript bookmarklet that will change the font size. Uh, bookmarklets are awesome, and they're free. I mean, there is just a code of JavaScript that when a page is loaded, you once you've added it to your favorites or bookmarklets, or bookmarks, I should say, uh, and then you press it when the page is loaded, then it'll do whatever it, it was uh, aimed to do. And you can do a, a Google search for bookmarklets, or y there are other places that have created bookmarklets, and as long as you looking for, or you're looking for these legitimate repositories for these JavaScript uh, hacks, if you will, for your browser, you should be safe. I've got my bookmarklets installed. I've got tons of them. Uh, tons of them, including ones for uh, Flash, uh, developers, uh, blogging, page viewing, page toys, including, oh, this is kind of, actually, I should do, there's a Where's Waldo uh, page toy, and it'll it'll do something on the page that you have to go and find. I don't know, the, the bookmarklets, I think, are a good solution for getting around a lot of it. Um, and if I'm, let me do this, I'm going to check it on the fly. This is dangerous. I'm going to go to bookmarklets.com and see if there's a website there. Of course, I could be completely mistaken. Yep, bookmarklets.com. That's the original source, so go there. Add a, a, they've got 150 bookmarklets available, and all of them uh, should be able to help a lot of people, not just people who have problems reading web pages, but they're the best free add-on you could ever add to either Firefox, Internet Explorer, or in my case, Maxthen, which is the browser that I choose to. What about you guys? Uh, what do you think about uh, increasing legibility on websites? Do you think it's important? Or what toys or tools do you use to make sure that you can defeat anything the webmaster might be throwing at you that might be screwing specifically with legibility and readability? We're interested in hearing your comments, remarks, tips, tricks, whatnot. Leave a comment, follow-up response, or just swing by the chat room and let us know there. We're always in the mood for hearing something new, and we're always there at live.perillo.com.